Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The transportation of massive aircraft components from faraway factories to their final assembly lines has always been an elaborate, time-consuming, and very expensive process to most manufacturers. But some innovative companies stand out today for simplifying the process so successfully to the point of building their very own in-house planes to do the job. One such example is the European aerospace company's Airbus, manufacturers of the famous Beluga Super Transporter. Beluga Airbus took its first flight in September 1994 and has since then dominated the skies with aircraft components weighing in excess of 100,000 pounds on most flights. With such payloads, the monstrous beluga can easily reach a service ceiling of 35,000 feet over a range of 900 nautical miles. It can even travel up to 2,500 nautical miles with lighter loads. What makes the beluga unique is uh, the size of the cargo. Uh, we don't need to carry that much weight compared to uh, other cargo uh, business activity, uh, but what makes it very unique is the size of the sections we need to transport. And this is where the Beluga is uh, one, if not the biggest cargo aircraft in the world, in terms of the volume it carries. The Beluga is basically a transformed Airbus A300-600 to aircraft. refitted and reshaped to hold and transport huge bulky sections of new Airbus aircraft parts between 11 different factory sites and assembly lines across Europe. In 2018, an upgraded version of the Beluga was created and named Beluga XL. Five of these massive Beluga XL were manufactured to keep up with the hefty assignment of constantly and promptly supplying the busy Airbus factories and final assembly lines with the needed heavy-duty components. Each of them makes, on average, 60 flights a year. The loading and unloading processes for the Beluga aircraft is not nearly as complicated as you might think. Since the components and plane fuselage that are carried by the craft are so large, it cannot be loaded in the typical airplane cargo loading manner. On the upper front section of the Belugas, just above the cockpit, is a large horizontal hinged door. that lifts upwards over the top of the plane, giving access to a 23-foot high and 24-foot wide cargo bay, with a usable length of almost 124 feet. Specialized ramps and dollies fitted with floor rails and rollers are used to lift and safely glide massive aircraft parts into the hold. Another highly used method for the transportation of large plane fuselages and other components is by ship. Row row ships, as they are called, are used to easily transport dozens of these large components between manufacturing towns and assembly facility locations.
Row row ships are built with dual ramp systems on the side and at the rear, which are electronically operated to extend onto docks and quay sides to allow massive loads on dollies or flat cars to easily roll into its gigantic cargo area. This makes the process of loading large pieces extremely easy. And while inside, the cargo is strapped to the floor using specialized chains and locks to keep them steady throughout the duration of the maritime crossing. Due to these qualities, row row ships are extremely useful in the transportation of large pieces of airplane fuselage. When not flying its fuselages on the famous belugas, Airbus regularly employs the use of row row vessels. In April 2019, for instance, when Airbus needed to transport the components of two of its aircrafts from France to one of its final assembly lines in Mobile, Alabama, USA, it used the row row ship Ciudad de Cadiz. The transatlantic journey took 14 long days to complete. Airplane fuselages and other aircraft components are not only transported by air and sea. Railways also play a major role in moving these components over very long distances. One. NASA space shuttles are some of the most high-tech and complex vehicles ever built. But in some cases, they can't fly without the help of this age-old technology, the railway. In fact, the aerospace giant regularly uses its own specialized trains to move some of its important components. The NASA Railroad at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida is a 38-mile-long rail track connecting the main line of the Florida East Coast Railway and the Cape Canaveral Space Station. NASA uses their specialized trains to carry not only aircraft and space shuttle components, but also energetic materials like explosives, pyrotechnics, and propellants that are used in their centers. It's not something to just kind of sneeze about, you know. We, when we're hauling in, we're hauling four to five million pounds of explosives. The NASA train carriages are pulled along at 25 miles per hour. NASA owns three of these workhorses, which were built by General Motors between 1968 and 1970. and are generally called to work when shuttle loads demand tougher muscles. The transportation of massive plane fuselages does not end with moving new parts from factories to assembly lines. It also involves end-of-life fuselages. This time, it is carried by specialized road transport flatbed trucks. In Australia, historically important aircraft are not scrapped for recycling, but are cut into manageable sizes. And the fuselage is transported by road to museums and other exhibition facilities. This Boeing 707 was accorded this stately treatment by the Royal Australian Air Force, RAAF. One little known fact about this aircraft is that it holds the world record for the number of passengers on board for evacuating people from Darwin during Cyclone Tracy. The massive fuselage was carefully loaded and fastened onto a low truck by use of cranes, winch systems, and chain locks. The aim also was to restore the fuselage in recognition of the Australian Boeing 707 crews who operated the aircraft in both civil and military service. 
as big as they may seem, the transportation of gigantic airplane fuselages, whether by air, sea, rail, or road, will always remain an awesome sight to behold. Thanks to massive advancements our world has made in the area of transportation logistics. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.